What is up, guys? Welcome back to a new episode, a new series of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. As you may recall, the recent update actually broke the game for us, and we were forced to quit the series right in the middle. We were right about 1910 playing as the United States. Well, I started that series, and full disclosure, this is my second time, uh, because I discovered after I was done recording the first episode, which will not be aired. This will be the first episode, but I had a problem. The problem is the period key on my number pad. The period key I have I have made work with Streamlabs, the, my recording software, to start and stop recordings. The same key is used in game to type in values for things when you're building ships. So when I stopped the recording for the final time, I noticed that it actually started again. And when I stopped it and then we'll open up the folder to look at the recording files, I noticed several short recordings. So I just decided I didn't really do much in that first little bit. So I can easily recap it and then we can just continue on. So that's what we're going to do. Before we get started, though, please remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. Hit that thumbs up, show me you care, and hit that bell notification so you never miss an episode. I greatly appreciate it and it will help others find this content. All right, well, since I already started it, let me just go in here to the new campaign and show you exactly the settings that I did. We started off as the United States in the year 1910. Whoop, right here, we got normal difficulty. The AI opponent has, is historical. And we did create own for the fleet. And we did AI shared designs is selective. We don't need to do that though, because we can come in here and load this one. All right, here we go. As you can see here, we are in March 1910. We have the Virgin Islands. We have um, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. We have Pearl Harbor down here. We have Pago Pago. Uh, we have Panama. And I believe that is it. I don't think we... Oh, we have the Philippines and Guam. That is it. Uh, outside of the traditional United States, you know, we have Nome and Dutch Harbor and stuff like that as well. All right. So politics, I was trying to increase my relationship with the British Empire, and I think we are waiting to hear back from them. Finances, we are negative 42 million per month uh, in the hole, and that's just because we started building a bunch of ships. We're going to lower this down. We don't want to lower it down too much. You see, it didn't really make that big of a difference, but we definitely need to grow this naval funds right there. We are also building uh, our new shipyard. We have to get bigger ships faster. We got transport capacity cranked and our tech budget cranked. Speaking of tech, let's come in here. We're not using any priorities just because we want everything to kind of be done in its normal state. We don't want to rush something that will put something else behind. And finally, our ship designs. Here we have the battleship Evil. I'm not going to hover over it because if I hover over it, it brings up a thing like this. Well, I, I guess I can do that. Everything, everything's over here anyway, um, but it shows it here. So this is the battleship Evil. It displaces 26,000 tons at a cost of $323 million. Build time is 19 months. The maintenance is just over $2 million a month with a top speed of 24 knots. It boasts four two-barrel 13-inch guns. 14 single barrel 5 inch guns, 7 2 barrel 5 inch guns, and 15 2 barrel 2 inch guns. This thing is menacing. It is awesome. We also designed the Destroyer Tempest class. It displaces 1,200 tons at a cost of $23 million. It's going to take only seven months to build with a maintenance cost at just about $150,000 a month. With a top speed of 34 knots, this thing is pretty lightweight. Uh, it's got two single barrel five inch guns and two uh, twin deck tubes. We also put the mine hunter kit on it. It cannot lay mines, but it can certainly find them. And then we did the uh, cruiser, heavy cruiser class Goliath. It displaces 13,000 tons at a cost of 146, 147 million dollars. Build time is 15 months with a maintenance cost just shy of a million dollars. Top speed is 28 and a half knots. As you can see there's a point. It, it has uh, two two barrel 11 inch guns, which I thought it had three. 
thought it had more than that. That's all right. It also has 22 single barrel 5 inch guns and six underwater torpedo tubes. So I did kind of deck it out with the torpedo tubes. I probably could have done away with a couple of those, but um, let's actually go in here and look at these uh, a little, little bit closer here. So we're going to go into view. So this is the Goliath class. No, that's not. This is the evil class. So yeah, just look at that. It's how menacing this thing looks. It is just nothing but barrels. That's all you see is just barrels everywhere. You got a barrel pointed at you. No torpedoes on this, but it has a lot of guns and it moves pretty quick. Uh, 24 knots, as you can see there. Tempest, again, pretty small, pretty lightweight, really quick. Uh, can detect mines, cannot lay mines. If we were to give it the mine lane capabilities, Let's see what that would look like. It would, I don't think I can add it uh, because I already saved the design. We're already building these, these ships, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. But anyway, it does have the uh, torpedo tubes there and it's got the big guns. No real small guns on this, on this ship. Those are only five inch guns. So can't really get much smaller than that without you know, like going to the two inch. So it is what it is. I'm not in love with it, but they're cheap and we can build a lot of them and they'll be all right. Now let's take a look at the Goliath. Here's the Goliath, it's a heavy cruiser. We have the single turret up front. We got all the casemate guns. I could not place any turret style, like five inch guns along the, the sides here. It just would not let me. Yeah, so we only have two of those bigger guns. But I did place um, torpedo tubes under the water line. I believe there's Two on this side and two in the front and back, or one in the front and back. So on the sa same side too, it's got the other side there. So it does have a lot of torpedo tubes, which is great. More like a, a destroyer would, I guess, but yeah. So this is our ship designs that we made thus far. Now, all right, so let's head over to our fleet now. And all of these ships are actually currently building. So we have two of the battleships, you see here we have the evil class and the Washington, uh, the, the evil class, but the USS evil and the USS Washington. And I also set the ports, you can see down here. Also built several of the Tempest class destroyers. There they are. And a few, I think there's five of them, of the Goliath class heavy cruisers. So they are currently being built, as you can see here, all the yellow. And we're just waiting for them to be built. We can't really do anything until we have our fleet. So there's that. We just do next turn. All right. We have some oil in the Gulf Coast of Control United States. We have some tensions coming up between the British Empire and the German Empire, France and the German Empire. Looks like Germany is boiling something there. And my efforts with the British Empire, of course, have failed. I'm not sure why. All right. Um, was successful. Oh, Spain. Is wanting to improve relationships. I think that's great. Oh, okay. All right. So let's take a look at what's going on over here. Um, yeah, the Austro Hungarians are also at war with uh, Russia, I believe. And Germany in the Netherlands is causing some issues, getting people fired up in, in Europe. All right. Not much we can really do about any of it since we don't have a fleet yet. That's okay. So let's come into our politics tab. I would really like to improve my relationship with the British Empire. They are the top dog, but they just denied me. So I'm going to improve my relationship with France. Yes. Finances, let's take a look. Keep a tabs on that. It went down a little bit. That's great. Um, but we definitely need to keep that, keep this up, keep the naval funds up. Not much we can really do about it, though. I don't want to lower anything else down. There's not much to we can. We can lower this down to nothing, and it doesn't really affect anything. So, uh, actually, we're going to keep that at 50%. We're going to spring it back up a little bit. Research, nothing's really changed here. Ship design, again, nothing's changed. Fleet, nothing's really changed. We're building them just really slowly. So there's nothing really to do but hit the next turn. All right, tensions are continuing to increase between the British and, and German. Belgian signed a, a special alliance with the Italian in, Empire. That's great. Oh, yay. We uh, got some better relationships with France. That's awesome. The Russian Empire regains full control of Azerbaijan. That's good. All right. So things are cooling off in Russia, it sounds like, and things are warming up 
against Germany. Once again, though, our fleet is still being built. Some of these are about halfway done, and we got a long way to go. So, politics. Let's come down here to our tab. Active fleet, zero ships. We're building 18. Uh, everything looks good. Like, we're pretty much friendly with everybody. Germany is starting to slip, uh, but we are the low, we are the low nation on this totem pole. So I want to make sure that I'm friends with the top dogs on this totem pole. We're going to improve relations with the British finances. Take a look at that. It is slowly going down, which is good. I'm not sure why, but it is slowly going down and I'm not complaining. Research again, nothing's really changed here. Uh, nothing's getting close, but that's okay because we still need to build these ships. We can't really improve them until they're actually built. Naval communication is getting close, I go, and so is maneuver warfare. So there's that. Ship design, nothing's changed, and fleet, we're still going along, so next turn. All right. Natural oil resources have been discovered in the following providences. Uh, Bruni. I'm not even sure where that is. British Empire. Tension between Germany and Fran uh, Germany and Britain and France continue to rise. Oh, and they are now at war. Um, so we lost a lot with uh, Germany because they went to war with our friends, even though we're not allied with them. So it is what it is. Portugal signed a alliance with Spain. Venezuela with the Chinese. Arabia with the Spanish. I would like to get one. Uh, your instinct was right, and your efforts to strengthen with the British Empire was successful. Yay! All right, politics. Back into here, yeah. As you can see, Germany is upset with everyone. They have 76 ships, five battleships, two battle cruisers, uh, 10 cruisers, 30 light cruisers, 24 destroyers, and five, I guess, steamships? I'm not sure what SS is. Let's see, and we have nothing yet. We are slowly climbing the uh, Ladder people tend to like us, but they're also, they don't really care for us. Germany doesn't, just because I'm friends with them. I am not seen as a threat at all. So, who do I want to make happy? I'm thinking Spain. We'll be friends with Spain or Italy. Try to bolster some of these guys here. Maybe the Russians. Maybe Germany. Just stay out of this completely and just improve relationships with Germany. Let's see if that happens. Finances. Well, we're still going down monthly. Research. We got one month here for naval communications, two for naval warfare. Uh, two months for the shells here, I see. And that's really about it. Ship design, nothing's changed. Fleet, again, nothing has changed. So, next turn. All right, here we got our new technology. Yay. Transport losses. Oh, I was unaffected with Germany. Bummer. Japan tried strengthening resources with me. Uh, and just information about the war going on here. All right. Politics. Let's take a look at ours again. Japan tried strengthening their, re their relationship with me. So I might try to do that with them. There we go. Finances. Nothing has changed. Ooh, it's down to seven. Nice. Research. Ship design. Nothing has changed. Fleet. Nothing has changed. We really need to get these ships being built here. All right. Next turn. All right. We got new shells. Yay. Blockade tactics. Yay. Here's the transport losses for the war against Germany. We are not involved in any of that. Uh, Colombia signed uh, an alliance with Japan. So when we get these, they will buy ships from us, but we can't get them, I guess, until we actually have ships to sell them. Ooh, okay. That's strange. Why would France poke us? Take a look at our politics here really quick. France, yeah, we're down a little bit. I'm going to try and improve relationships with them. Finance. Now we're in the in the black here, but what I think about doing while I was waiting for the next turn to, to roll over here is actually build some more ships. We have these ones that are going to be done here fairly soon. We got these destroyers anyway. So let's build some more ships and, and keep keep building ships here. So we'll go to the ship design. Um, I think I built how many of these? Just two of them. Okay, so we're going to do just one more of these build ship just one we'll build it uh let's see these destroyers we're going to build we can build six of them and a couple of these heavy cruisers let's build five more of them there we go five build try to get our 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 strength up here our, our naval strength 
So I'm going to set the ports. I'll be right back. All right. So I got them put in their ports. Those new ships being built. All right. Come back to the world. Nothing has really changed. I mean, they're blowing up here. I'm sure there's little skirmishes happening everywhere. We still have this uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire uh, going into Serbia. That's really about it. I mean, like, there's hardly anything going on in the world other than the big blow up in Europe. So nothing for us to do again next turn. All right. And France has entered, entered the war. United States versus German Empire is negative 15. Once again, because I am positive with France, uh, Germany now does not like us. That's their loss. Here's transport losses for the war. Netherlands signed uh, an alliance with the Chinese Empire. That's great for them. Oh, bummer. Okay. Interesting. The people of Guinea Bissau takes arms and try to gain control of Portuguese Guinea, Guyana. That is currently occupied by Portugal. I think that's down here somewhere. Um, honestly, I don't know much about South America. <laughs> All right. So here's some uh, army losses from the invasions and stuff. Cool. Doesn't really affect us because we cannot do anything about it because we do not have a fleet yet. It's it's coming. I promise. Let's take a look at our politics tab. Uh, let's see here. Who do I want to be friends with? I would really like to bolster my relationship with Germany just because I don't, I can't afford to go to war with a major global power at the moment. And they are, they are fairly strong right now. As you can see here, they're what, third down? Yeah. So again, I don't know how this is actually ranked. I don't know what metric this is all ranked by. I just know that we're on the bottom and they're on the top. They have 55 ships. They're building 24, repairing 37. So they have a large fleet, especially compared to us, not compared to like France or, or the British, but, or the Italians, the Italians, I'm sure they're happy with. No, no, they're, wow, cool. Uh, so anyway, I think I should probably be nice to them. I'm gonna try and <laughs> improve my relationship, try to remain just neutral, I guess. After building those sh new ships, we're now down 67 million per turn, which is not good. Um, we have to really keep an eye on that. Our research, not much has changed. We got, you know, some things coming up here, but not not enough to, you know, make a new ship design or refit anything. We don't have anything to refit yet. So we do have these destroyers coming online here real soon. Um, they are being commissioned. So in next month, they will be done and they're not going to do anything. They're going to sit in these ports and basically guard our coastline. See, I got some down in the in the Caribbean. We've got some in the Philippine Sea, South Asia, uh, Western Coast and Eastern Coast. And that's it. Submarines, of course, we have nothing. All right, next turn. All right, tensions increase between the Germans and the Italians. We have new technology just came on board. Transport losses for the war. Uh, the Ottoman Empire is signed with Spain. My last playthrough, I was getting all of those. Um, I think that's because the, we started off and nobody had anything uh, in the last one, I believe. So, and we, we were building ships faster than everybody else, but that's, it's fine. Uh, Togo land. Okay. All right. Relations unaffected. Yeah. They didn't like us. There's some army losses for the land invasions going on. Politics. Um, let's do improve relationship with the British. Yes. All right. It's slowly going down. Research. Uh, we got internals protection coming up here. I'm thinking about actually making a new ship design as well. We got gun layout, turret mechanisms coming on board. Explosives coming up here pretty soon. What does that entail? Tube powder, low burn. Nice. I would like to start getting some submarines too. We didn't get do submarines in our last playthrough at all. So anyway, I was thinking about putting some priorities in here uh, to get ready to build a new ship design. And I think I'm going to. Let's throw one in there. Uh, we want turret mechanisms. We want that to be done here real soon. That's coming up. The underwater acoustics. Let's see what else we have. Internals protection. We can probably put one in too. We got anything closer. Gun layout. So I put that in there and it's two months away. So we're going to do... We're probably going to do it in two turns here. There we go. So... Once again, we're going to build a new design for our ship. I'm thinking like a light cruiser kind of a design or maybe a battle cruiser, something like that. Fleet, here we got our um, destroyers are all done. We're still building everything else. So it's gonna take a while. World, 
next turn. All right, we got new mounts for our large guns. Yay. We got some new small gun barrels. Hydrophone station type one. Here's the transport losses for the war that's going on. Now we have Greece signed with Spain. Dang it. I need some of these. There's not too many countries left. Uh, let's see. Defeat Germany uh, failed to gain control of the Netherlands. Wow. Let's go take a look at that really quick. Yeah, they're just battling it out here. I mean, I wouldn't mind sending ships over here if I had the ships to send and get involved in this. Not saying I really want to be involved in other people's fights, but you know, we are the United States and we do need to project our, our, our naval might across the globe. I mean, that is what it, this game is all about. We have to be at the top of this up here, which I'm, I just scrolled to the top. France is now top dog. Looks like Britain got knocked down a peg or two. Wow. Okay. Let's improve relationships with France. Finances, negative 27 million. Research. We're going to pull these out now. We're going to leave that one there. I think after those are done, we can um, design that new ship probably next turn. So let's put... No. Let's... That's it. That's the only one. Small guns? We get two months on small guns. What do I get for that? A little three-inch guns. Mark three. Uh, three-inch guns, which we don't really build anyway. So I like the two-inch guns, and I like the five-inch guns. So for the, our secondary small guns. Not saying that three-inch is bad. I just prefer two-inch for because they're really fast, like almost like a machine gun. And five-inch because they're fast and historically accurate. And... Uh, they pack a little bit more of a wallop, but they should still shoot pretty fast. All right. So here is our fleet. Um, so yeah, we are going to next turn after this one comes on board, we will design a new ship. Let's do it. All right. There we go. Anti-flooding is done. Yay. And tube powder one low burn is done. Here's transport losses. Oh, we uh, improved with France. Yay. Major offensive. All right. Come in here to our politics before we do anything else. Let's see here. Let's improve with the Italians. We haven't done them yet. There we go. Finances, negative 19. Research, pulled that out. So everything else kind of comes on, you know, keeps, nothing is being stifled. Ooh, cruiser design. All right, so <laughs> new change of plan. I just saw this. So we get a new, we're, we want to build a cruiser. So if we get a new cruiser design. Well, this is latest and greatest. Might as well. Whole construction, tower crane system researching 98%. If we do that, it's two months out. I really want to build a new ship like next turn now. So that's the only one I'm seeing, this one here, that we could do relatively quickly. So we'll do that next turn. We gotta put it off one more turn. All right, yay, yay, yay. It worked with uh, Italy. We improved our relationship there. That's great. Um, oh, Russians kind of poked us, great. So we come in here to the politics tab first. Let's see here. British climbed another another spot. Looks like Germany is falling quickly. That's not very good for Germany. Russians, ooh, negative two. That's not good. Chinese Empire, negative five. Let's improve relationship with China. Um, finances, negative 10 million per turn. Building 48 of our new shipyard size. Research will take that one out. Perfect ship design. Let's build our new ship. New design. All right. So I'm thinking that we want a like a light cruiser, something that can move fast. Semi-armored cruiser, two, three, four. Where was that new design at? What does that look like? It looks very similar to our heavy cruiser, our armored cruiser, yeah. So the semi-armored cruiser and, I mean, it's different, but it's very similar looking. I, I was wanting a CL, a light, light cruiser here. So I guess we'll do this design right here. We'll place our towers down, look at the uh, stats of these these masts. I'm looking at the base accuracy and the long range accuracy. Uh, I mean, everything's important, but we really need to pay attention to our accuracy and how much they are and how much they weigh. So base accuracy is two, base accuracy is two. So this one is lighter and cheaper. It doesn't make any sense to go with this one. I mean, there's not, not a lot of difference, okay? So, this one here, again, is two. It's lighter and cheaper. This one here is 6.5. So the front tower eight is significantly heavier, but it is also significantly better. So we're probably gonna go with it. There we go. Secondary tower, um, 
1.5, long range accuracy is 12, 1.5. So I'm probably gonna go with, oops, I'm probably gonna go with uh, this one here. The difference between this one and this one, other than the weight and the price, is the long range accuracy is significantly better on this one. So we'll place it down. It looks goofy, but we get that long range accuracy. All right, funnels. We're just gonna throw down a funnel. Probably going to be the big one here, the medium funnel. We'll just plop it right in the middle. We're just gonna do one for now because we can change up our engines over here. Actually, let's do that first. Fuel type, semi-oil, natural boilers forced. We want turbines, auxiliary two, a better shaft. We want this to be with the with the rudder um, and a balanced rudder. You're going to keep your speed. You're gonna turn pretty good. Uh, and you're gonna be able to speed up after the turn quite well. Uh, an unbalanced rudder, you're gonna lose all your speed, but you're gonna turn very quickly. And it's that's great for like a battleship that's got a lot of momentum that has to turn and get out of the way of an incoming torpedo. So it's kind of like hitting the brakes. It's why you want an unbalanced rudder on a bigger ship and more of a balanced rudder on something like a destroyer. So for this, I'm actually gonna go with a balanced rudder. I wanna keep my speed and you'll be able to maneuver quite well. All right, we want electro uh, hydro steering. We're gonna go with Krupp 2 armor, double bottom pull, reinforced bulkheads, anti-flood two, citadel two. Well, so with this, we, we actually gain a lot of weight, 7%. Citadel one is 5%, or we can do none. We'll see what it's like with our, our weight here at the end. Range finder, I like this stereoscopic uh, range finder two over the, the coincidence rangefinder. Um, this one is 90% is fast, and we got 10% accuracy. This one's a little bit slower, but it's got a lot more accuracy. So I like this one. I'd rather take a little bit longer to get our, our range and then actually hammer them versus we can get the range really quickly, but then we miss. So we're gonna go with that one. Acoustics, we'll go Hydro 1, uh, Advanced Radio. We're not gonna worry about laying mines. All right, so now we have our engines, and I can see our engine efficiency is now 108 with one funnel, just because we did some stuff here with the, the engines. All right, main guns. We're gonna put some big guns on here first. Put one in the front, one in the back. Secondary guns. Oh, there's that three inch gun. <laughs> but I like the two inch gun. Why again? Because of how fast it shoots. If you look there at the rate of fire, we got 14, point, 14 and a quarter rounds per minute. Uh, this one is uh, 12. So 13 is a little bit slower. Reload time is 4.6 seconds. Reload time on the two inch gun is 4.2 4 seconds. The penetration difference is, uh, let's see, at 1,000 meters. For HE, I'm looking at 0.3 for the three inch and 0.2 for the for the two inch. The two inch actually weighs a little bit more. The six inch, uh, the three inch is actually a little bit lighter, but a little bit more expensive. Let's go with the three inch. You know what? Screw it. You talked me into it. If we can actually place them, because oh, there we go. Place them there. When I was building that heavy cruiser, I cannot place any kind of secondary gun. You can see here, just it's not turning green for their sector of fire. So I would like to place one of these guns, or a couple of these guns rather. Oh, oh, right there. Can I place one on this corner? I have it shooting a little forward. That's a, a big no. That's all right. All right. So casemate guns. We'll just go keep it with three inch guns. All the guns all the time. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a, a porcupine. Torpedo launchers, we're not gonna go under, uh, we're not gonna go crazy with torpedo launchers. Uh, we're just gonna do one up front, maybe one in the middle, and we're not gonna even worry about the back. Um, try to keep cost low a little bit and build time low, and obviously our weight savings. Okay, so that should do it for our armaments. We went through everything down here. Now let's take a look at our speed. We definitely want our speed to be up. Actually, let's increase our displacement here. We want, to, we want to take advantage of everything. It is so touchy too, this little thing. All right. Okay, so now it says that this is badly placed. Oh, because it's gun probably moved. Sorry, I should have done that first. 
So let's get rid of that to get our balance right too. Oh, come on. Th this build mechanism isn't the greatest. See, like, I didn't mean to deselect that. I really just want to, like, keep things there. Like, I'm left-clicking and right-clicking, and sometimes it, it'll actually select things and deselect things, and it kind of seems to have a mind of its own. Let's put another casemate gun right here. And do we have any more spots? No, I think that's it. All right. So back, back. Um, I want that, those secondary guns. Oops. I want them on here someplace. Because more guns, the better. You have more of an opportunity to hit our target and cause damage. And that's all I can really do. All right. So our speed, we have to bring our speed up. And this is where our engine efficiency drops off. See, I'd rather do, like, I'd like to keep it right around 30 knots. We go 30.6. Our engine efficiency is now in the toilet. So we have to add another um, funnel. And we have a lot of weight forward. So we're going to move it as far back as we can. Hold down the shift key. I can place it where I want it. Engine efficiency is still in the toilet, so let's add another one. <laughs> I didn't want to remove it. Let's see. Oh, and we also have to bring up our, our crew quarters here. We want those to be standard. I'll keep an eye on my weight now. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh, boy, it can't make up its mind what it wants to be. Engine efficiency is still really, really bad. So let's, but our weight is getting up there. Let's add another funnel. Okay, ship is now overweight. We can, we can adjust a few things for having that overweight. And can I add a smaller funnel? Yeah, we are overweight, but our engine efficiency is is now just at about 100. I'm not gonna worry about adding any more funnels. We can maintain our, our 30 knots. Let's figure out our balance here and get it under underweight. So we're still really heavy in the front. Let's try and move things back if we can. Looking down here at this these masts, I, I like this this cage mass here because we do get that long range accuracy, but it also weighs a lot compared to just the rear mass three. So it's it's also way cheaper. Um, but we lose that accuracy. That's all right. We'll just place this one down. That gets us under weight. Uh, can we put more of these back? Yeah, we can. Okay, we're still underweight. But we have a lot of four weight, like we have a lot of weight up front here. So let's try and move things back as much as we can. Okay, moving the 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 front mast, the front tower back. I can only place one of these secondary guns up front, right dead center. That's fine. I'd rather have one than none. All right, let's see. We're still 6.2% nose heavy. So what else can we do? We can't move anything else back. We got everything back as far as it can possibly go. So we need to come over here to our armor and we need to either add weight to the back or subtract it from the front. So I'm all about adding weight or, or adding armor thicknesses where I can first, especially if we have the tonnage to, to spare here. So let's put some on the aft deck and I'm watching this number as I'm clicking this. Okay, so we're really close to going overweight. We still have 0.9%. So I'm gonna take away some from the four belt and that's this area down here. We're just going to subtract a couple of layers of armor here. God, I don't like doing that. So, all right, there we go. So we're 0.1% nose heavy. I'd rather be aft heavy, but that's okay. Uh, we probably could get rid of this torpedo launcher, but I'd rather keep it. When we come charging into a, a swarm of ships or something, we can actually um, take it out pretty quick. All right. Okay, so I think we need to name this ship now. Uh, that has a name for it already, but I don't like it. I'd li I like to do our own name. So let's hit this. And I think my last playthrough, if you go back and watch those, I was naming them after types of blades. Uh, the battleships were like states, and the smaller ships were named after like, uh, you know, the dagger class, the stiletto, dirk, you know, those are, those are all knives. So... This time I'm just kind of making it up, and this one looks like it's it's a furious ship. It's really fast, 30.6 knots. Well, it's not really fast, but it's fast for this for this time period, and it looks like a porcupine. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it the Fury. This is the Fury class light cruiser. We're gonna save design. All right, exit. I did forget to go over the stats, so here we go. Here is the Fury class light cruiser, uh, 11. 
11,439 tons at a cost of $165 million. It's going to take 13 months, just a little over a year, with a maintenance monthly cost of just over a million dollars. It can do 30.6 knots, but it boasts two single barrel seven inch guns, 34 three inch guns. Uh, well, times that times that by, it uh, should be 37. Uh, we, some of those are casemates, some of them are just sitting up on the deck there. And we have three underwater torpedo tubes. So uh, it's not heavily armored, but this thing does move through the water and it does uh, pack quite a punch. So I love it. All right, we need to build this ship though. So let's select it. There we go. Build this and let's build like a bunch of them. Build. Our finances are taking a major hit here. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hopefully some of these ships get done pretty soon and we can stop paying for them. Or, you know, uh, oh, we should build an export yacht. I just thought of it. Well, we don't have anybody to sell to anyway. So our politics, take a look here. What I'm talking about is see these little flags right here. These are the minor countries and they like to align with the global powers and then they buy ships. And they have like an unlimited amount of money that they will buy ships from you. And our last playthrough, we had a bunch of these. And so every time uh, I would mothball a ship, they would be sold almost immediately. And I created what I what we call uh, export yachts. It's a very expensive battleship or something like that that they will pay a lot of money for. And I just build it for them and then I get paid for it. And it kept my finances really good. I don't have that here, and I'm hemorrhaging money. It is what it is. Next turn. Well, we are January 1911. All right, we got ooh, we got some stuff going on here in the world. France going toe to toe with Germany. The Chinese Empire improved relationships with us. Yay! Russian Empire gained full control of Georgia. Good on them. Uh, well, I don't know if that's really a good thing or not, but let's see. Uh, this is the overland battles here. Uh, colonial request. Okay, so the Dominican Republic's new leader was found to support armed terrorists who disrupt the regional trade networks of the United States, increasing the tension between the two countries. The United States governments decided to launch a swift military operation to occupy the Dominican Republic, replace the local government, and pacify the region for the coming years. A task force of at least 41,000, 42,000 total tonnage is needed to support the invading force. Do you support this action? I mean, they tried disrupting our, our trade agreements, so yeah, I'm going to support it. So now we have to get ships here, and we don't have many to, to, to spare. Uh, let's go to the politics first. Uh, let's see here. We're going to scroll down to us. We're still at the bottom. Big surprise. Just looking at our relationships here. I'm thinking that Russia we could be friends with. Finances. Ouch research nothing really much changing we've got torpedo tubes gonna be uh finishing up here real soon that's about it we're not planning on building anything new here's our ship designs our fleet nothing is coming online anytime soon all we have are these uh destroyers that's not great maybe i should not have accepted that because i don't think i have that kind of tonnage i can bring down here let's check it i'm not even sure where these ships are at let's see here we can go to fleet we have to take everything that's in the Caribbean. Um, Saint Juan, or excuse me, San Juan. We got uh, anything on the East Coast? Norfolk, New York, and Boston. Okay, we go into Boston. We'll take this one here, remove it down to here. Move New York, Norfolk. I don't think I have enough tonnage, but we will see. Where were those other ones at here? There we go. Just checking to see if I got anything here now. I, I knew I didn't. All right. So I have our, our destroyers that are within range uh, heading to this uh, conquest here. Oh, boy, this mouse is really touchy. All right. So they're coming here to the Dominican Republic to support their operations here. I got a feeling that uh, we're not going to be able to make it. We have six turns to, to get enough tonnage there. Right now, our chance to succeed is zero. So that's not good. Uh, fleet... Do we have anything coming up soon-ish? No, it doesn't look like it. Three more months here. That's four more months uh, in reality for these. And we got Philadelphia, and that's it. So 
Yeah, I should not have accepted that. It's all right. Next turn. Uh-oh. France is going to go after Spain next time. We got some new uh, torpedo tube technology. Transport losses. Relations unaffected. Okay. Relations improved with Russia. Yay. Military conflict. Russia is going after that place. People of Libya are going up with the... Auto yeah. Border change. Yay. Victory. Nice. All right. Our ship should be there. Chance to succeed is zero. Yeah, we are well under tonnage. I don't think that's we're going to be able to do anything here. Um, politics, take a look at that. Uh, let's see here. I really want to improve my relationship with Germany just because... Where is Germany? Germany is way down here now. Just because I want to be friends with everybody. Remain neutral. Finance is not looking so great. Here is our, re our research. Whole construction is coming up. What, what whole construction type are we getting? Tower crane system. Okay. Ship design. Nothing's changed. Fleet. Nothing has changed. Uh, we do get a couple more destroyers here real soon. Uh, maybe we can send them over as well to this little conflict. Next turn. Transport losses. Conquered. The Italian Empire has conquered Ethiopia. Good for them. Our relationship has been improved with the Germans. That's good. Uh, military conflict. Russia and Belarus is going at it. Ooh. Okay. We are losing this fight. That's not good. So we do have some new ships. Let's move these into the theater. Move. Not sure where they're all at, so I'll check them all. Yep. Here we go. Move ship. All right. All of our ships are moving into the area that are within range, but it's not going to be enough. It's not even going to be close. We're going to lose this, this fight and... It is what it is. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please remember, if you enjoy this content, hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you care. And hit that little bell notification so you never miss an episode. And with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.